In this show of the Pathmark Presents podcast, I'm with uh, Nate Aswick, and he is actually the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Prime Robotics. And uh, prior to being the Director of Marketing, he's uh, actually now the Director of Sales and Marketing. So we're curious to learn more about Prime Robotics, about Nate's journey as he got where he is today. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take it from there. Welcome to the show, Nate. Yeah, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you guys having me on Pathmark. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, yeah, as you said, uh, my name is Nate Aswidge. Um, I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing for Prime Robotics. Uh, it's www.primerobotics.com. Um, and we're an automation company uh, that provides hardware, software, service, and support solutions, uh, mainly for the warehouse, distribution, uh, and e-commerce industries. Makes sense. Um... You alluded a little bit to it already, who the clients are. I'm curious always sort of about the people that are using the platforms. You know, what is that? Is that a, a operations manager? Is that a head of logistics? Like who is, you know, typically ringing you guys up and, and getting started? Yeah. Uh, so the people who are typically ringing us up are usually the owners of, uh, you know, for this purpose, let's just go with warehouse, right? That's probably mm -hmm. our biggest industry. Um, so typically... Um, Typically, our big, uh, the person who I'm speaking with the most is usually the owner or sort of the warehouse manager, the person who either runs the business or the person who is managing all of the labor and pick labor and all of that kind of, um, all of those kind of people that, that help a warehouse run every day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good. Um, and now you as a VP of sales and marketing, like how do you think about their journey? Like how do they get to know Prime Robotics? And maybe in other words, sort of what is the client acquisition channels that you've you know discovered and that you're excited about? Yeah, sure. So we're we're uh, we're a leading turnkey provider for robotic automation. Um, so specifically, our market we really focus on North America. Um, so uh, our ability to um, really provide, um, really provide a custom solution and a turnkey solution to our clients um, is a pretty big is a pretty big differentiator for us. Um, my own, our owner Eric Wrongly, our CEO, um, before prior to going into tech, um, he actually worked um, in the warehouse industry for about 25 years. So um, we're able to uh, we're able to build robotics and software that are productive um, and that are Uh, warehouse focused, right? Versus just a cool machine, so to speak. Um, so pretty good background there. Um, as far as clients go, who do we speak with, right? I'm speaking with uh, the owners and uh, the operations managers, as I said. Um, but also, you know, that's who we speak with, who we, who we solution with. Um, they're usually our point of contact. Um, but from a warehouse perspective, you know, everyone really benefits from the robotic automation that we bring um, from cost savings opportunity, even the laborers, right? The pickers that are there working eight, 10, 12 hour days um, that can be backbreaking work. You're walking, you know, they have step counters and you're walking five, 10, 15,000 steps in a work shift. So um, uh it's not it's not the easiest it's pretty manual labor so um even the pickers and laborers that can now um have a robotic automation solution to help them with certain aspects of that um it's a pretty big benefit for for everyone top down top to bottom um who's running a warehouse or an e-commerce business gotcha so so now that you've been taking on the head of sort of sales and marketing um how do you think about the balance between inbound and outbound but we speak a lot about this in the podcast um you know do you should sort of tend towards the outbound because it's you know maybe a product that has a lot to explain is this inbound because you're driving you know thought leadership you know where do you see the company shifting sure um so you know i love working here and i started off as the director of marketing here um about six months ago um, that's where my career is. I've been working um, in head of marketing positions in technology um, in the Denver area for about 17 years. Um, so I, I started at Prime Robotics um, as head of marketing here um, and then moved into the head of sales and marketing role um, after we had some initial successes. And, and um, you know, I really just have an interest in going that direction. Um, so that's so that perspective really allows me to be a salesperson, you know, but 
with a marketing background, right? With a marketing mindset, understanding customer journeys, valuing those customer journeys, um, understanding that reaching our customers takes multi-channel engagement, uh, multi-channel promotion. Um, so whether we're seeing them at an event now that COVID's done um, or, um, or whether we're, uh, you know, whether I'm engaging them on social media platforms or paid advertising, um, Google AdWords, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, those are a lot of the outbound engagements that I'm working with on a daily basis for sure. Um, inbound wise, you know, Google ads, um, and it's pretty interesting, right? The robotics, the warehouse robotic industry is pretty far along in Asia, China, Europe, companies like that, or, I'm sorry, countries like that, uh, and continents like that. It's been, um, you know, they, they have embraced it for probably the last three or four years. So North America and the U S is pretty new to the idea. Um, but I would say in the last three months specifically, uh, interest, demand, opportunity, it's gone through the roof in, in a way I would say I've never seen before um, with a tech company I've been at. Um, so that, that's been super exciting. I mean, we, we're talking a lot about website and you spoke about an influx in, in demand there. Like what role do you attribute to the website and you know, what role do you foresee for the website given that sort of inbound growth? The website is uh, my number one priority um, no matter whether I, whether I send a, you know, a message out on an organic post or paid advertising or, you know, organic PPC, however they might find us, they're going to our website first. Um, it's the first impression. It's the first, uh, interaction that they have with us most of the time. Um, so it's hugely important. Um, and we connect website with tools like, uh, like HubSpot, um, and, uh, and use email, you use their email tool. Um, so generally speaking, um, people visit our websites, we're tracking them. Um, I'm pushing out content to them, value-based content, whether it's statistics or, um, you know, blogs that they might be interested in reading if they're kind of thinking about is automation the right fit. Um, so yeah, it really, the website is huge for us. Um, and it drives, um, you know, 95% of the leads I speak with uh, come through the website first. Where do you see the strength of the current website? Then as, we, as we're speaking about this, you know, where do you see the strengths versus where do you see room for, for improvement? Uh, typically marketers that we meet, they're very critical with the pages. I'm super critical. I think my website is okay right now. Um, uh, our What is good about our website? Our site is simple. Uh, easily to understand what it is we do um, and, and simple to navigate. It's pretty user-friendly. You can be there for three or four minutes and get a pretty decent understanding of what we do, the robotic solutions we offer and, um, and, and how we go about that, how we work with clients through support services, maintenance, all implementations, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I do like the directness and the simplicity of our website. Um, the design, the overall look and feel, uh, it needs work. Um, it's a priority for us and just one I haven't gotten to completely yet. So um, I would say, you know, to be critical, I want the look and feel to be, um, I, I'd give it a C now and I need an A. That's it. Very good. Um, I mean, Obviously, thinking about a website, the, the topic on, of conversion optimization appears when we speak with marketers and people have a very perspe a different perspective on website conversion optimization. What's your take on it? What's the challenge in optimizing conversions? You know, generating traffic is one thing, but then generating leads is another. Like, how do you think about that? I want to get their information, right? Um, I am, our deals are larger deals, right? Um, Generally speaking, you know, a sales cycle is between three and six months and a deal is between half a million and three or four million dollars. Mm -hmm. So they're not daily transactional deals, right? Um, so what I'm looking for, you know, for deals like that, 
people are going to, sh- they're going to share their information in my opinion, um, mm-hmm. if they're super serious about, about looking into it. So um, any of the content I publish out, any ads I push out there, it all drives people back, whether it's within that ad port platform or back to our website um, to a small form field, right? Uh, if you're interested, first name, last name, company, and email is all I need. Um, and most of the time, I'm back with people who engage us within five minutes. Interesting. Uh, but I mean, let, go ahead. yeah, to so to just to expand on that, um, conversion website conversions are hugely important, uh, and I feel lucky because our deals are a little bit bigger. I think our audience is a little bit more. Um, understanding of giving personal information and expecting a call reach out. Um, whereas, you know, in a smaller transactional base, that might be harder and you might have to work with, with other strategy, other marketing strategies. It makes actually a whole lot of sense how the, the deal size correlates to their inhale willingness to provide information. Very interesting insight. Um, For sure. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about you uh, and your your path uh, as to you are where you're today. So you obviously you've been in you know very uh, interesting uh, director of marketing roles, actually quite quite a few. And um, I would be curious, right? You know, there is so much content on marketing out there today. Like, how do you educate yourself? Like, how do you filter? And you know, what are the sources where you say that's actually worth my my time to educate myself? Uh, for, you mean from content development perspective or for your, own lear- for your own learning as a sort of, you know, now you're ahead of marketing. Uh, and sales okay. or- so, yeah, I understand. So, um, how do I stay ahead of, of the competitors and how do I stay, um, uh, relevant and intelligent within the space? Um, I'm following a ton of publications, right? So we follow, you know, robotics, as I said, is fairly new, but our audiences are not right. Um, grocery distribution companies, um, convenience stores, any uh, 24-7 warehouse magazine. Um, there's, a, there's a ton of publications out there speaking to warehouses, supply chain and logistics. So I'm constantly, um, I'm constantly educating myself on the warehouse business. Um, I'm pretty decent, fairly savvy with tech and robots and all of that. Um, but I'm more, I'm more into um, understanding the audience, right? Understanding our customers and their business and where their pain points are and, and developing solutions out of that. So, um, you know, like I said, media publications, um, podcasts. Uh, I'm, I actually, you know, I use TweetDeck and follow a lot of um, follow a lot of different um, uh, information handles that pump, pump that provide information through there. Um, yeah, and and not for the last year, but I'm a big event guy. Um, I think if you can get to the right event um, and it has the right people, man, you, you can learn a lot. You can sell a lot. You can get a name for yourself pretty quick. Um, so I'm pretty excited to, uh, I'm pretty excited to have events back. Get back to it. Get, get back to it. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Uh, let's wrap it up with uh, our rapid fire questions. Um, are you ready for those? Yeah, shoot them. Let's go rapid. What's the last book you read? Uh, the last uh, the last book I read is actually Blink from Malcolm Gladwell. And it's an older book that I'd purchased, I don't know, probably 12 years ago. And I reread it. Uh, uh, I reread it a few months ago. They say the books that you reread are the good ones, no? Yeah, for sure. Any of Malcolm's books are awesome. Uh, I would say if I have a critique of myself, I don't have very much patience. So uh, in certain scenarios. So if I can find a book that talks to me about making decisions quickly, I usually read it. (laughs) (laughs) Very good. What's the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? Uh, Meeting demand. Um, We've got two base solutions. Our mobile shelf robotic solution, which is a goods to person um, robot that goes underneath a shelf and then picks that shelf up full of full of inventory um, and brings it to the person. Um, and then we have a mobile pallet solution. Um, so our mobile pallet can move up to 4,000 pounds. Um, and again, really, um, they can be pretty customized in terms of their workflows and supply chain and, and logistics. Um, they can be pretty customized in terms of um, what areas of a warehouse or a supply chain they can help. Uh, so it's pretty cool in that way. Um, and so 
Yeah, right now it's meeting demand. Um, it's a new industry. Uh, we've been around about seven years, but the industry is pretty new in the US. And um, I think warehouse owners, e-commerce owners, manufacturers, in the last year, they've really, they've really started to feel the pain, right? Labor is expensive. There's not enough labor. Um, I need extra labor and scale up during holiday hours. Um, so the demand is really spiked in the last six or eight months. Makes sense. Um, so um, meeting, that de- meeting that demand is probably our challenge right now. Mm-hmm. If there would be no boundaries in technology, right? What would be the thing that you want to fix for your role? That I want to fix for my role? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to automate a little bit more some of the content I push out to companies that are in our sales cycle. Companies that are not yet clients that are going through the lead journey, let's say, the opportunity journey. I want to get more information to them in new ways that I haven't seen yet. I think this is a fantastic point. And I think a lot of companies struggle with this, sort of that, you know, that valley of you don't know what's going on. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, sure. Very good. Um, okay, awesome. Let's wrap it up with the last question. Um, if today, I mean, you've been in what, like five, six great um, marketing director roles, like if you would be, you know, zooming back to the to the day uh, where you actually, you know, left um, uh, Colorado State University, you know, with your, um, with your degree, <laughs> yeah. and you would have to give yourself one advice for your marketing career, what would you do? Or what would you say to yourself? I would say to grow thick skin. <laughs> uh, uh, in marketing, in marketing, uh, your work is going to be seen by thousands of people, including your boss and your boss's boss, and and so forth. Uh, and they all have an opinion. Um, so being able to have thick skin for that and and manage that and manage those expectations uh, has been a big um, uh, has been something that I've done well. Uh, so so. Uh, but I've had to learn to do that, right? So um, if someone would have told me that initially, that would have been great. Um, and same on the sales side, right? You've got to manage client expectations um, and and ensure that their journey and, and that the trust is there and the relationship is there. So um, yeah, I would say it's about, uh, I would say it's about that. Very good. Very good, Nate. I really appreciate that you took the time to be a guest on Pathmonk Presents. I want to give you the very last word. If somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed about Prime Robotics, what's the one thing that they should remember? Yeah, um, I would say, so first of all, thank you. I want to thank you for having myself and, and Prime Robotics featured on Pathmonk. Uh, super cool podcast you guys are doing, so appreciate it. And again, it's www.primerobotics.com. Um, I, I guess I would say... Uh, um, the biggest differentiator for us is um, our ability to provide a turnkey solution, right? We provide the robots, the proprietary software, um, and the services support and maintenance, um, as well as all implementation and integration. Um, so any company can come to us and, you know, in roughly three to six months, um, be running robots. Um, it's a pretty cool thing. And, and, we're a leader in North America. And so it's, it's pretty exciting right now. Nate, thanks a lot for being a guest on Pathmark Presents. All right, guys. You have a good day. Thank you very much.